Brian Hamlet with NewMediaWorkshop.tv Mobile browsing has reached an all-time high with the creation of the smartphone, which is any iPhone, Android, or Windows mobile-based device. In a recent research report by eMarketer, it was found that 75% of the U.S. population now has mobile phone service and that nearly 114 million consumers are expected to access the internet via their mobile phone this year. Now this has made it extremely important to have a mobile friendly version of your website for the flood of new visitors who will be using this new medium to read your content. With at least 114 million chances that someone could be trying to look at your website on their phone, do you really want to take the chance that it looks horrible? Now you may be asking, are people really going to be looking at my website on their phone? I don't think so. Well, in that same eMarketer report, it was found that the top three tasks that people use their mobile phone's web browser for is to, one, shop for a product or service. Well, do you operate an e-commerce website? How does it look on the iPhone? Two, search to find information. Well, if people are searching Google on their smartphone for something, don't you think they may come to your website? I mean, you are in Google, aren't you? And three, find entertainment. Now this could be from watching videos on their phones to looking for something to do for Friday night. Now if you're an entertainment option, can they easily get your information from their phones? So now you're saying, okay Brian, I get it. I need to make my website mobile. But how do I do that? Do I have to hire some special web developer? Well let me show you how you can immediately make a WordPress based website mobile friendly. Now if you're not operating your website on the WordPress platform, which we highly recommend, then be on the lookout for some of our future tutorials about using some of the available mobile website solution providers. Right now, let's get started in this tutorial about creating a mobile friendly version of a WordPress website. So what we're going to do is go to our WordPress website. And this is what you want to do for yourself. So go to your WordPress website. And you actually want to go to the login screen. So that will be if you're not familiar with where to go. It's your website forward slash WP dash admin. Now, once you get to the WordPress admin console, go ahead and log in. And what we're going to use to accomplish this task is a plugin called WP touch. So to do this, we need to go down to the plugins option and click on add new. In the search block, we're going to type in WP touch, no spaces. And what we're going to see, the very first option here is the WP Touch plugin. Now I'm going to click details so that you can take a look a little bit more details about this particular tool that we're going to use. And essentially what this is, is a tool that will detect whenever anyone is trying to access your website via mobile device, it will show them a mobile friendly version of your site. There are pre-built theme already into this tool that will then display your articles, your blog posts, your content in a mobile friendly way. And you can actually take a look at this by looking at the screenshots option. So here's actually how it's going to look once we've installed this tool. It's going to convert all of your articles into something that see that can easily be displayed within a uh, mobile phone's screen. And this goes all the way down to even the comments control, your individual pages that you may have on your website, uh, to your contact information, and even your Twitter feed, uh, which is a new tool that they offer. Uh, and along with your contact information, even a contact form that they can use directly through their mobile device to contact you. So we're going to go ahead and install this plugin by clicking the Install Now button at the top. And as long as it says successfully installed, click the activate plugin option. Now this is going to allow us to look into the settings um, by scrolling down onto our plugins page and clicking the settings options. Now in this particular tutorial, we're just going to show you how to simply set up the WP touch plugin. There are a lot of different options that you can set here for your own personal website and how you want it to appear. And unfortunately, there's no way we can display what your website will now look like using this plugin. We've really got to refer to the screenshots uh, of how this will make your website look. So first, let's go through the different settings that we have. Now, in the general settings, a lot of this you're not going to need to change. 
Uh, for the WP Touch language, you probably want to leave it at automatically detected so it will be based on where a person is located. And for the home page, what this is built off of is your WordPress settings that we had in the reader page. Now, when I'm referring to the reading page, this is, do you want people to see one static home page or do you want people to see a listing of all your latest posts? Now, in the case of our tutorial website we're using, we're just showing our latest posts and I've got our tutorial website loaded right here. So if we had multiple posts, you would see them all one after another. However, your website, your WordPress website, may be set up to have a static page selected for the home page and maybe another page selected to display all your blog posts. Depending on what your setting is right here underneath the reading option is how WP Touch will know what page to display first on the home page for the mobile version of your website. So you can leave that at WordPress settings and it'll feed off that or you select an individual page. So you may have actually created a mobile specific page that you want to show as the home page for the mobile version of your website and you can select that option here as well. We're going to leave our set for WordPress settings. Now it pulls the site title for your mobile website from what you've already set in your WordPress installation. So you should see what you're currently calling your website. In this case, if we scroll at the top here, we'll see it's the WordPress tutorial website. And that's exactly what it's showing us here. Now you may actually want to change this to be something more specific for the mobile version. So we could call this WordPress tutorial website mobile version. And that way anyone accessing the website would recognize this is the mobile version of our website and that we have another version if you're accessing our website via desktop. Now another thing you may want to think about are if there are specific categories that you do not want to display in the mobile version. And where we've seen this used often is anyone who has an image gallery that is one specific category of their blog post. And they realize maybe this is difficult to show in a mobile version or really I just don't even want to show it in a mobile version. Well, you can actually exclude those categories whenever someone is accessing the mobile version just by getting the category IDs and typing them in as a comma separated list into this box. Now you may be asking, how do I get the IDs of the categories I want to exclude? Well, the easy way to do that is to go up to your post options and click on categories and you'll see your list of all the categories that you have. Now here, as I hover over my category name, if you look in the bottom status bar, you're actually going to see what the ID of this category is. It's marked with the key phrase tag underscore ID. Using that number gives you the category ID that you need to use to set for the WP Touch exclude category option. And again, you may have more than one. And if that's the case, you can actually separate it via a comma. So we can add as many as we want to or as few as we want to. Now the next option you have is exclude by the tag ID. So this works very much like excluding based on category ID, only the difference here is you're gonna be going up and looking at all the tags that you have. And currently we do not have any tags. So we're just gonna add one real quick so you can see what that looks like. And to get your tag ID, you're going to do the same thing that we did for the category ID. Put your mouse hovered over the tag. You do not have to click on it. And look in the bottom status bar of your browser. Now this will show on uh, Firefox. This will show on Safari. As long as you have the status bar turned on, this will show an Internet Explorer at the bottom of the page where it shows the link you're about to go to. Look for the key phrase tag underscore ID and write down that number or put that in a notepad program so that you can take all those tag IDs when you want to exclude that from WP Touch and add it into the list that they have here. So same thing, we can do this as comma separated. In that case, our tag ID was three for that option. So any posts that we have in WordPress that use that specific tag that we created called example will exclude it from the mobile version of our website. Right now we're going to leave that empty, which is going to show all the posts. Now text justification works very much like you would expect, only you have two options. Either you're going to left align it or you're going to do a full justification. 
Now, it doesn't really matter which option you select, so you may want to try both these options, look at it on your mobile device, and see which one you would prefer. We're going to leave this set for left. Now, we've got an option here for how do we want to display our articles. Now, I've actually loaded up the WP Touch page, plugin page, on WordPress so you can see what I'm referring to here. So I'm on their screenshot page, and by default, it is going to take the date that you posted your article on your WordPress blog and set that as the icon for your specific article. But that may not be what you want. You may have loaded images into your WordPress articles and you would rather show those images. Well, you're in luck. You actually have that option for the plugin. We're going to select this drop down here and we'll see we've got the option for post thumbnails featured images. And what this is going to do is grab the very first image that you're using within that article and make that the thumbnail for the article in your mobile version. Or you can use post thumbnails featured images random, which is going to grab, if you have more than one image in the article, it's going to randomly pick one of those to be the thumbnail for your articles. Or you can just say, I don't want any icons and I don't want to show any thumbnails because maybe you've tried it and decided it doesn't look that good. And if you select this option, you're going to see essentially no icon here and just the title of your article and the information underneath that, but no images. Now, I would suggest that you select one of the options either for the calendar or the images just because it makes your website that much more engaging. If someone just saw a list of, of written text, it may not be that attractive to them to make them want to click on it. So we're actually going to select ours as the calendar icon just to leave it. And we also have a few settings that decide what shows up for the post listing. So when we see here enable truncated titles, this means I'm only going to show so much of my title because on a mobile phone, it only has so much space. So if I've got a title that's 15 words long and I only have space for about five words, I need to shorten that up. If you want to do that, you can set the option to truncate that title down to a smaller amount. And at the end of it, it's going to add the little dot, dot, dot that you see here in our options very at the end of it. So people recognize that your title is longer than what they're reading. You also have the ability to show the author's name of the post. Now, here's some things you need to think about with the author's name. If you are not currently showing the author's name of the blog post on your current WordPress website, go ahead and deactivate this for the mobile version. It's not going to detect in your current desktop theme, so the current version of your website when I access it via my desktop computer, it's not going to recognize if you've turned off the author's name from showing. Either way, this is going to show it unless you uncheck this item. So if you do not want to show who wrote the article itself, uncheck this item. If you also don't want to show what categories the post has been listed within, you can uncheck that item as well. And same for tags. Now, the last item that you have is do you want to hide the excerpts or do you want to show the excerpt? Now, in the screenshot version we're looking at here, if we scroll, if we zoom in close to it, you're going to see this is listing the author's name, the categories it's listed, and the tags that are listed. But there's no excerpt here explaining what that article is about. Well, you may decide, I don't need any of this. And I'm not even currently showing this on the desktop version of my website. I actually want to show a brief paragraph what the article is about in hopes that they'll want to read more about it. If that's the case, you need to uncheck this item. If you leave it checked, it will do what it says, hide excerpts. Now we've seen people make the mistake where they're just seeing that of excerpts or thinking, oh, click, I want to see it. But instead that'll hide it. So you need to make sure you uncheck this if you want to show it. Now at the bottom of your mobile version of your website, you got the ability to set up what you want it to say. Now it's going to pull in a default setting for you that looks very much like this, all content copyright. And then what comes after it pulls from the WordPress site title setting in your WordPress core settings. Now, again, you might want to change this to something else if you need it something shorter, or if you would rather say something other than all content is copyrighted, or even add the all rights reserved at the end of it that you see on a lot of desktop websites. However, just know that you're not really able to add the copyright icon, the C within the circle that you typically see, just the limitations of the plugin. Now, even with just these general settings all set up, 
If I were to save this now, it would look a lot like you see in the screenshots here, only replacing this information with the excerpt from my articles. And that may be all you need to have your website immediately set for a mobile version. But you've got some more advanced options here with this plugin, which is part of what makes it so fantastic to use for any WordPress website. I'm going to scroll down to let you see a few of them. One new feature is the very first one here, which allows people to use the pinch and zoom on their mobile device to actually zoom in on the content. So if you've got a lot of content for your articles and in your mobile version, it's still difficult to read, they can use the pinch and zoom on their browser to enlarge it and make it easier to read. Now, another thing is you can actually show the categories tab in the header. Now, what it's talking about is there is built into this a navigation that is on the right hand side with a drop down button and a few buttons across the top that can show your different categories. So when someone clicks on that little right hand side, it's going to pull up a menu of the actual menu structure for your website. So where we have on our tutorial version, home and sample page, we would actually see in our first drop down home and sample page. But you can also turn on if you want to show a link to all the tags that are used, all the categories that are used, and even do you want people to have access to the login screen for your WordPress installation. And that's the options we're looking at here. Do you want to show the categories tab in that drop down? Do you want to enable the tags tab in the drop down? Do you want to enable a search link so people can search your WordPress website using the mobile version? Do you want to enable the login, the My Account tab? So those options you have are all set up for this particular section of the mobile version of your website. Once they click that arrow on the right hand side, these are the options you're telling them that they can see and navigate on your WordPress website. So you're going to want to think about that if you want to show it or not. My recommendation for the majority of websites is go ahead and turn those off. You may want to leave the search on. But unless you have used a few different categories on your WordPress website, there may not be much reason to have that enabled. And there's often not a reason for having the tags tab activated on the mobile version. Now, a few other things that you can do, it's going to require additional features to be installed. And that's these two that you see is, do you want to actually display your Twitter link plus your Twitter feed within the mobile version? Now they're telling you this does require another plugin to be installed in order for this to work, as well as do you want to display any sort of upcoming dates? And when we're referring to upcoming dates, we're talking about any sort of venues or upcoming events that you want to highlight on the mobile version of your website. That also requires an additional plugin to be installed. So right now we're going to leave those unchecked since it detects we don't have them installed. It's not even an option that we can click. Now a few additional advanced options we have are if we want to enable any comments on the post for our mobile version. So if you currently allow commenting on the, mo on the desktop version of your website, you may want to allow this to be accessed on the mobile version of your website. And I'm going to scroll down here so you can see what this looks like. So they will have the option here to click on the option to post their own comments to the mobile version of your website. However, this is one important note. If you are using a commenting system other than the standard WordPress system, this will not be using what you currently have on your website. So if I'm using something like Discus or Facebook comments or Comment Love or LiveFire, any of the other commenting tools on my WordPress website that you access through the desktop, this one right here for the mobile version will use the built-in commenting system within WordPress. So just know those will not be connected together. Now, if you've got your tools set up like Discus or LiveFire or Comment Love to automatically import any WordPress comments, then that will keep them synced together. But you need to be aware of that if you actually want to allow commenting on the mobile version of your website. Now, we've also got the ability to allow the comments on the pages, just like you do in the standard WordPress. And we've got the ability to turn on the gravatars in the comments. Now, gravatars are the little thumbnails that show up next to the person's name who posted the comment. So do you want to show that in the mobile version of your website? Two more options that we have are 
if someone is visiting the mo your mobile website for the very first time, you can actually have it show your desktop theme. So what they would see if they accessed your website via their laptop or their, their computer web browser. And then they can select, do they wanna see the mobile version? So it may be people are used to seeing your desktop version and they're visiting your website for the first time on their mobile device. Do you wanna show them your desktop thing first and then give them the option to see the mobile version or take them straight to the mobile version of your website? So if you want them to go straight to the mobile version, leave this unchecked. If you want them to go to the desktop theme and then let them choose to view the mobile version, have that checked. And then the last option that we have here in the advanced settings is enable WP touch restricted mode. Well, what is that? We're gonna click that so you can see what it is. Now this, this is essentially to fix anything that might be broken on the mobile version because of the other plugins that you have installed in your WordPress installation. So if you go to your mobile website with this plugin turned on and something is not working correctly, you may wanna come in here and actually select this option. What that's gonna do is turn off a lot of your other plugins so that whatever is breaking the mobile version of your website will stop breaking it and it can, act, it can function correctly. So again, you may not have to do this if everything works fine the first time you activate this plugin. If it's not, come in here and set this option. And then for the custom user agents, we're gonna leave this blank, but a user agent is a person's device and web browser combo. So am I on an Android device using the built-in Android browser? Or am I on the iPhone 4 and I'm accessing using mobile Safari? Or whatever the combination is. And there's certain key codes that you put in there if it's something additional to what most people are using. And they actually show here on the right-hand side the most common user agents. And these are the codes that the system will recognize if whenever I receive this from someone trying to access the website, I need to show them the mobile version. Likely you don't need to set that. The last options we have underneath here are for any sort of push notifications. So that way if you've got, now in this case you do have to have a particular tool that's gonna let you know when anyone has commented on the mobile version of your website or did a ping back or track back or whenever someone registered for your WordPress website, if you've allowed user account registration, or whenever someone's tried to send you a direct message. If you wanna have that push to your email address or your contact information and you use the service called Prowl, you can put in your Prowl API key here, which can be very nice if you've got a lot of users that are accessing the mobile version of your website, because this just creates an easier way for them to communicate with you using their mobile phone. The last few options we have are how you want to change the different themes. There are a few built-in themes to WP Touch. The default is the one you see here in the screenshots. So it has dark backgrounds for the Twitter feed, for the dark backgrounds for the main navigation. And then most of your actual articles appear on sort of a light gray with a nice white background with nice rounded corners. Looks very nice and clean. But you may want to test out a few of the other options that they have that you think may look better for your website. You also have the ability to set what font you want to use. So these are ones that you can play with and try them out to see how it makes your titles and your text look. You can change the title color. You can change the header background color, subheader background color. These options here, you'll see that you can set them to whatever color you want to, a uh, color combination to make your mobile website look a little bit more in line with how you would want it to look. So if you did not like the default, this gray with a white background with just black text, and you wanna change that up, you've got some options here that when you click into it, you'll see that you've got a color selector that can allow you to select any one of these colors and set that as the color for these various options. The last pieces that we have within the whole tool, see you can see how complex this tool actually is. And actually we have two different sections, or one for any sort of advertising and any sort of stat service that you're using like Google Analytics or Quantcast. And what it allows you to do is run mobile advertising on your website. So if you are using Google AdSense on the desktop version of your website, you can actually activate that in this theme for the mobile version of your website. Just select what 
advertising service you're using, and right now they only have the two options, and then put in your Google AdSense ID if that's where you're using, and your Google AdSense channel, which we would recommend to create a mobile channel so that advertisers that sign up for that know they're signing up for the mobile version of your website. Now for any sort of stats code like Google Analytics or Quantcast Analytics, you can actually copy and paste their code in this block here that will add it to the mobile version of your website so you can track the performance and visitor statistics for the mobile version of your website as well as the desktop version. And the final tools that we have here are for setting the navigation menu bar in the mobile version of your website. It actually uses icons to represent the different pages within your website that gives something a little more visually engaging for the mobile version of your website. Now I'm gonna show this in their actual screenshots they have. So you see here on the left-hand side of the names and the navigation links, home, contact us, creating themes, docs, these icons that represent those pages. Well, those are icons you can use in the back end here of the plugin to set up for your individual pages. So you may decide, well, for my Twitter feed, I want to use the Twitter icon. And for the any sort of default page that I have, I'm just going to use this nice little notebook icon. Maybe for the contact us page, I want to use the little mail icon. So all of these icons are things that you can set for the pages that are set up in your WordPress navigation menus. And what's even better is you can upload your own icon if you wanna create custom ones for each of your pages. So that way you don't have to use the ones that are here in the selection that they provide you, you can actually upload your own. And then what you need to do once you've set that is actually set how the icons are gonna be used for each page. So in this case, I can set my default icon to be something other than what it's using. And the default that it's using, if we look here, I'm going to scroll up so that you can see the one that they're using. They've set their own that is this little icon right here. Typically, it is using the notebook icon. And you may not like that so much because it's not very attractive, but that's, that's this one right here. You may decide you'd rather use something more creative like the squares or the camera or any of these other ones, or even the photos that looks like a nice sort of beach scene, or upload your own icon that is your brand in a much smaller version. So you can select the option here, and then we can actually enable a few different options for what we want to show up in the navigation menu for the mobile version. So do we wanna show the home menu item? Typically, we would say, yes, you do want to. Do we wanna enable the RSS menu item? Now, RSS is really simple syndication, any of your users who like to get your post feed to their RSS reader, you can provide that for the mobile version as well by selecting this option. Do we want to enable the menu, the email menu item? This is actually them contacting you via email web form in the mobile version. Do we want to show that or not? Do we want to show the powered by WP touch in the footer section, which is essentially giving a little credit to the creators of this plugin. And by default, it is turned off. Now, how do we want to show the menu order for our navigation? Do we want it to actually follow the names we have for our different pages in alphabetical order? Or do you want to show it by page ID? And yes, these are the only two options. So it may not be able to match what your desktop version of your website has because it can only sort it alphabetically or based on the page IDs. And if you created your pages in random order, so it's not page one, two, three, four, five, six, but you've actually reordered those, it's not gonna appear the same as it is on your desktop website. Typically, we suggest sorting it by alphabetical order. That way it's easy for people to navigate to and page ID gets a little more complicated. Then the last thing that we can set is all the different static pages we have. And if we had more than one, we just have our sample page, we can actually set a specific icon per each one of these pages. So we could show the contacts icon for our sample page. And you do need to select the option and the check because these are the pages you are saying you want to show up for the mobile version of your website and the icon you want to associate with that page. Now by doing so, when you're looking at these icons, it's using the ones that show up here in the list. So use these names underneath that to reference what icon you are selecting 
in the list that shows up here. Now, once you have completed all those, all those settings, and really you do not have to do all of these, the default settings will work great for you, but we wanted to show you all your different options to see how much control you have over the mobile version. Once you have them all set, click your Save Options button, and now the new mobile version of your website is all ready to go. Anyone who accesses your website via their mobile device will start to see the mobile version of your website. Now, we took a bit longer to go through all the different features that you have in this plugin. However, you could have a mobile version of your website just using the WP Touch plugin and the default settings within two minutes. Literally two minutes, you've got a mobile friendly version of your website if you're using the WordPress system and the plugin WP Touch. Now, we're going to have a whole series on how to create a mobile version of your website, whether you're using WordPress or not, and show you even more advanced functionality within the WP Touch tool in our continuing series of mobilifying your website. But if you had any trouble following us in this tutorial or you've got any questions about how to use the WP Touch program, just drop, drop us a comment in the section below. And this is another tutorial by NewMediaWorkshop.tv. Thank you.